We recently tested Hex Allen keys and there's a huge difference between the brands. But what about Hex Allen sockets? We've got a bunch of different brands to test today, so let's get the testing underway and see which brand is the best. In the first test, we'll see which brand can handle the most torque. Then we'll see which ones can handle impact and which ones will snap. At a price of $15, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Pittsburgh and sold at Harbor Freight. The Pittsburgh is a nine-piece set. High visibility markings for easier, faster bit selection. Made of chrome vanadium steel. Trying to remove these sockets from the socket rail takes quite a bit of effort. The Pittsburgh brand is made in Taiwan. Let's kick off our first test and we'll see which brand can deliver the most torque using a 532nd socket. I'll use a torque adapter to keep track of the maximum torque. I'll replace the fastener with a new one after each test. And the Pittsburgh doesn't offer a very tight fit. And the Pittsburgh only made it to 133 inch pounds before letting go. However, the Pittsburgh did hold up just fine with minor wear and tear. At a price of $18, the second least expensive brand we'll be testing is this seven-piece Husky set. Storage rail included. Chamfered lead-in sockets and bit help provide fast and easy placement into drive tools and fasteners. Cold form chrome vanadium steel. Heat-treated S2 tool steel bits for outstanding durability. The Husky is a product of Taiwan, but it's finished in mainland China. Definitely a lot tighter fit with the Husky. And the Husky performed 27 inch-pounds better than the Pittsburgh, making it to 160 inch-pounds. No visible damage with the Husky. Also at a price of $18, the same price as the Husky is this 14-piece Mix Power brand. High contrast size markings is permanently laser etched and easy to read. The Mix Power is made of premium impact grade chrome molly steel. Separate pinhole base design adds additional safety. The Mix Power actually has a pretty nice carrying case. The Mix Power brand is made in China. The Mix Power is definitely undersized at 0.153 inches. Extremely loose fit compared to the Pittsburgh and the Husky. And the Mix Power really struggled in this test, only making it to 95 inch pounds. No visible damage to the Mix Power. At a price of $20 is this 17 piece DeWalt set. The kit includes nine hex as well as eight torque sockets. The sockets are 3 8 inch drive, direct torque technology, hand stamped markings, knurled control ring. The DeWalt brand is made in Taiwan. The DeWalt offers a pretty loose fit compared to the Husky. And the DeWalt performed about the same as the Pittsburgh at 132 inch pounds. There's no visible damage to the DeWalt, but the DeWalt does have quite a bit of taper and the edges aren't as sharp as the Husky. At a price of $22 is this seven piece cobalt set. Size callouts are hard stamped, professional high polish finish, made of chrome vanadium steel and heat treated for strength and durability. Meets or exceeds ANSI specifications. The cobalt brand is made in Taiwan. Nice and tight fit with the cobalt. And the Cobalt moves into the lead with a very impressive 182 inch-pounds or 18 inch-pounds more than the second place Husky. Unfortunately, the high torque load did cause some bending and rounding. At a price of $23 is this 13-piece Capri tool set, crafted from custom forged premium steel. Proprietary heat treatment. S2 steel bits withstand high torque and do not twist. We're going to test that. The Capri Tools brand is made in Taiwan. Nice fit with the Capri Tools. And the Capri Tools perform nearly as well as the Husky at 153 inch pounds. And the tool still looks as good as new. At a price of $25 is this 8-piece Tecton brand. If you're trying to conserve space, the Tecton's rail seems a little bit too long. S2 steel bit is press fit into the socket for a straight permanent connection. Large clear die stamped size markings is easy to read. Four detent grooves provides a secure connection with drive tool. The Tecton brand is made in Taiwan. And the Tecton doesn't fit quite as tight as the Cobalt. And the Tecton lost grip at 140 inch-pounds to move into fourth place behind Capri Tools. No visible damage to the Tecton. Coming in at a price of $25 for six pieces is this Craftsman brand. The Craftsman brand does not include a storage case or a socket rail. Includes large markings for easy identification. Full polished chrome finish for corrosion resistance. The Craftsman set is made in Taiwan. The Craftsman has a pretty loose fit. And the Craftsman barely outperformed the Pittsburgh at 135 inch pounds. And there's no visible damage to the tool. At a price of $30 is this 14 piece Nico impact set. Corrosion resistant black phosphate coating. Chrome molly steel for extra durability. Includes a storage case. The Nico brand is made in Taiwan. And the Nico Impact offers a much better fit than the Craftsman. And the Nico came up one pound short of tying the Husky at 159 inch pounds. However, the Nico did experience a small amount of wear and tear. At a price of $34 for 14 pieces is this carbine set. Very nice storage case. Zinc phosphate bit finish for corrosion resistance. Chrome vanadium steel sockets for strength and durability. The carbine brand is made in Taiwan. The fit with the carbine seems about the same as the Nico. And the carbine performed much better than average at 155 inch pounds. No visible damage to the carbine. At a price of $34 is this 16 piece stubby impact hex driver set made by Sunex Tools. Forged from high quality chrome molly alloy steel for maximum durability. Solid one piece construction eliminates weak points and increases durability. 
The Sunex Tools brand is made in Taiwan. Skipping to Sunex since it doesn't have a 532nd socket key. At a price of $39 is this 32-piece Lexavon set. 16 pieces are SAE and 16 metric. Includes premium S2 steel chamfered edge bits. Ultimate rust and corrosion protection. Developed by Lexavon in USA. The Lexavon is made in Taiwan. The Lexavon isn't nearly as tight as many of the other brands. And the Lexavon let go at 136 inch-pounds, which is slightly below average. No visible damage to the Lexavon. At a price of $39, is this 34-piece Master Hex set. Includes 17 SAE and 17 metric sockets. The hex bits are made of S2 alloy steel. Superior hardness that reduces wearouts and ensures maximum durability. Hex tip bits are precisely machined to ensure accurate sizing. There's no information on the packaging regarding where the Master Hex brand is made. The Master Hex offers a pretty loose fit similar to the Lux. Lexavon. And the Master Hex performed nearly the same as the Lexavon at 134 inch pounds. And the Master Hex held up just fine. At a price of $46, the second most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Nico. 16 SAE and 16 metric sockets. Constructed of high strength chrome vanadium steel that provides superior torque and greater turning power. The hex tip bits are precisely machined to ensure accurate sizing. The Nico brand is made in Taiwan. A pretty decent fit with the Nico. With less taper along with some sharper edges, the Nico performed very well at 166 inch pounds and moves into second place behind the Cobalt. No visible damage to the Nico. And the most expensive brand we'll be testing is this Gear Wrench brand, which includes 39 pieces and costs $64. The set includes hex, torques, Phillips, and slotted. Flex socket design provides more access to fasters and tight confines. High visibility laser etch markings. Off corner loading design for reduced fastener rounding. The Gear Wrench brand is made in Taiwan. And the Gear Wrench performed quite a bit better than average at 151 inch pounds. And the Gear Wrench held up just fine. So the Cobalt came out on top at 182 inch pounds. Nico finished in second at 166 inch pounds. Husky 160, Nico Impact 159, and Carbine 155 inch pounds. Socket cap screws offer a very limited surface area and a lot of factors impact the holding strength of the socket keys. The amount of taper and the preciseness of shape play a huge role. I measured all the tools and the mix power is the most undersized at 0.153 inches. Most of the other tools were much closer to the appropriate size. Assessing wear and tear is highly subjective and the tools that experienced higher torque values are more likely to experience damage. Most of the brands did not experience any noticeable damage. The Cobalt did experience the most damage but it also performed by far the best at 182 inch pounds. Let's go quite a bit larger and let's see how the 5 16 hex bit socket holds up. I'll go with a much larger torque adapter that can handle the extra torque. And the Pittsburgh made it to 1,253 inch pounds or just over 104 foot pounds before it finally rounded out the fast and the Pittsburgh held up fairly well with a small amount of wear and tear. Just like the first round of competition, the Husky once again outperformed the Pittsburgh by quite a large margin. 1,500 inch pounds are about 250 inch pounds more than the Pittsburgh. And the Husky destroyed the bull. Not surprisingly, the very high torque load did cause some wear and tear to the Husky. And the mixed power claims to be made of impact grade chrome molly steel. Unfortunately, the mixed power couldn't handle the farmer power and snapped at 1,032 inch pounds. Now that's a lot of damage. And the DeWalt is off to a much better start this round of competition, finally losing grip at 1,351 inch-pounds to move into second place behind the Husky. No visible damage to the DeWalt. Just like the first round of competition, the Cobalt once again performed very well at 1,417 inch-pounds to move into second place behind the Husky. The high torque load did cause some wear and tear. And the Capri Tools performed very well in the first round, but it lost grip at only 1,217 inch-pounds in this round. However, the Capri Tools held up very well with only minor wear and tear. And the Tecton performed a little below average in the first round, and it also performed below average again this time at 1,292 inch-pounds and moves into fourth place behind DeWalt. Just a small amount of wear and tear with the Tecton. And the Craftsman performed quite a bit better than the Tecton, making it to 1,388 inch-pounds before losing grip. No visible damage to the Craftsman. And the Nico Impact performed very well in the first round, but it gave up early this round at only 1,235 inch-pounds. And the Nico's edges just aren't very sharp, which reduced the contact area with the bolt. And the Carbine just couldn't get a good grip on the faster, and it let go at 1,310 inch-pounds. And the Carbine looks as good as new. And the Impact Rated Sunex performed very well and had no problem holding on. 1,531 inch-pounds to move into the lead over the Husky. And the Sunex still looks as good as new. The Lexavon performed below average in the first round of competition and it's below average again this time at 1,270 inch-pounds. No visible damage to the Lexavon. The Master X has less taper and sharper edges on the tool which really helped it maintain a good grip. 1,450 inch-pounds and there's no visible damage to the tool. The Nico performed above average in the first round, and the Nico performed above average this time again at 1,391 inch-pounds. And the tool survived without any visible damage. 
And the gear inch performed very well in the first round of competition, and it performed very well again at 1,401 inch-pounds. No visible damage to the gear wrench. So the Sunex came out on top at 1,531 inch-pounds, or 31 inch-pounds more than the Husky, which finished in second place at 1,500. Master Hex finished in third at 1,450, Cobalt 1,417, and Gear Inch 1,401 inch-pounds. The Sunex not only came out on top, it also avoided any visible damage despite the high torque load. The Husky finished in second, but it experienced quite a bit more wear and tear. The Master Hex held up without damage, and the Cobalt did experience a little bit more damage than average. Let's see if the Hex bit sockets can handle use by an impact wrench next. We'll need a 3 8 inch hex bit socket for the half inch bolts. We'll start off with the small impact wrench for 15 seconds and then we'll switch over to use the earthquake for another 15 seconds. And a Pittsburgh is not designed for use with impact tools but it survived the first test just fine. And I don't have a large enough air hose to unleash the full potential of the earthquake but it's still hammering away pretty hard on the Pittsburgh. Let's see if the Pittsburgh hex socket can handle around 200 foot pounds of torque. And the bolt began stretching at 175 inch pounds. And the Pittsburgh outlasted the bolt. So the Pittsburgh survived the test without any visible damage. And the Husky isn't designed for use with impact tools, but it held up just fine after 15 seconds with the Makita and 15 seconds with the Earthquake. And the repeated blows from the impact wrench along with a lot of torque from the breaker bar finally took its toll on the Husky, and the Husky finally broke at around 185 inch-pounds. And the Mixed Power is designed for use with impact tools. And the Mixed Power did survive 15 seconds with the Makita. Unfortunately, the earthquake is hammering away on the mix power and it's definitely causing some damage. And the mix power is beginning to twist with each blow of the impact hammer. And the socket did survive the 15 second test, but not by much. Let's see how much torque it can handle before it breaks. And the mix power made it to almost 150 inch pounds before the tool finally snapped. That's two broken mixed power tools. There's definitely a problem with the type of metal that's being used or else improper heat treatment. Let's get the DeWalt since the DeWalt kit doesn't come with a 3 8 inch socket hex bit. And the Cobalt easily survived the Makita and the Earthquake without any visible damage. And the Cobalt made it to 185 foot-pounds before the impact rated adapter broke. With the new socket adapter in place, the Cobalt made it past 200 foot-pounds just fine. No visible damage to the Cobalt. And the Capri Tools made it past both impact wrenches without a problem. And the Capri Tools even managed nearly 200 foot-pounds without breaking, and the socket adapter is still in one piece as well. No damage to the Capri Tools. And the Tecton didn't even break a sweat on the impact wrenches. And the Tecton made it to nearly 200 foot-pounds when another socket adapter broke. I'm quickly running out of tools. And the Craftsman made it past the impact wrenches without a problem. And the Craftsman along with the socket adapter survived 194 foot-pounds without any damage. The Nico Impact felt like it was making a stronger blow to the bolt, but it's hard to say for sure. And the bolt's done a great job of outlasting the socket adapters up until this point, and the bolt finally broke. No damage to the Nico. The impact wrenches weren't able to do any damage to the carbine. And the torque adapter just about made it to 200 foot-pounds, which is pretty close to the failure load for the socket adapter. No visible damage to the carbine. And the impact rated Sunex had no problem with the impact wrenches. Very close to 200 foot-pounds without a problem. No damage to the Sunex. Just like most of the other brands, the Lexavon handled the impact wrenches just fine. And the Lexavon made it to almost 224 foot-pounds before it broke another adapter. No damage to the Lexavon. The Master Hex is more than up to the impact wrench challenge and held up just fine. And the Master Hex made it to 233 foot-pounds when I broke yet another socket adapter. No damage to the Master Hex. The Nico has performed very well in this showdown and it survived the impact test just fine. I stopped the test at 222 foot-pounds since I'm down to my last adapter and we still need to test the gear wrench. No damage to the Nico. And the gear wrench held up just fine throughout the impact test. And the gear wrench made it to almost 222 foot-pounds when yet another socket adapter broke. No damage to the gear wrench. Let's go ahead and test the 330 seconds next, even though some of the brands don't have the very small sizes. The socket cap screws are very shallow, and the amount of taper on the hex sockets will make a big difference. 26 inch-pounds for the mix power. And the mix power experienced a very small amount of rounding. I just installed a new socket cap screw. And Capri Tools performed quite a bit better than the Mix Power at 32 inch pounds. And the Capri Tools still looks as good as new, but the tool has a little bit more taper than some of the other brands, preventing it from having as much contact area with the cap screw. And the Nico Impact socket moves into the lead at 34 inch pounds. Even though the Nico came in on top, it experienced the most damage yet with quite a bit of rounding. And the carbine performed the same as the Capri Tools at 32 inch pounds. The carbine experienced a small amount of rounding. And the Lexavon really struggled at only 24 inch pounds. Not only does the Lexavon have a lot of taper, the corners are also rounded more than the competition. And the Master Hex rounded out at 28 inch pounds. The Master Hex has a lot of taper and the six edges have a lot more rounded design than the top performers.
With less taper and six nice sharp corners, the Nico moves into the lead at 36 inch pounds. And the Nico is still in great shape. And the gear wrench has a little bit too much taper to match the Nico. 33 inch pounds for the gear wrench. And the gear wrench did experience a small amount of rounding. Only 8 out of 15 brands include the 332nd socket, and the Nico came in on top at 36 inch pounds. Nico Impact, 34 inch pounds. Gear wrench, 33. Capri Tools and Carbine, 32 inch pounds. If you're looking for a reliable set for around $20, I really like the Cobalt. It performed extremely well. If you're looking for impact rated tools, I really like the Sunex. The Sunex doesn't have the small sizes, but then again, if you're using impact tools on the larger sizes, it'll perform very well. Finally, I'm very impressed with the Nico. It performed extremely well and it offers a lot of sizes. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.